Welcome to the Heavy Spoilers Show. I'm your host, Definition, and we're back with a whole host of new information on the upcoming Matt Reeves Batman movie. Every week, same bat time, same bat channel, we do a big breakdown on all of the updates on the film, and this week, there's a lot to unpack. Throughout the video, we'll be discussing the new Batsuit information, the hidden Easter eggs in the film's logo, the potential Catsuit release date, and a lot more. There may be some spoilers here, so if you don't want to know anything about the film, then I highly suggest that you turn off now. Make sure you subscribe to the channel to never miss an update on the movie. And with that out of the way, I just want to give a huge thank you for clicking the video. Now let's get into our breakdown of the Batman. Okay, so we still haven't had a look at the Batsuit just yet, but there's actually been a couple of big social media posts this week that tease what it could look like and confirm a couple of things. Earlier in the week, Skull1015 mocked up some fan art using the Batman Noel suit from the game Arkham Knight and Robert Pattinson's chin. Now, there's thousands of these kind of images across the internet, and I've even, I've even tried sneaking some of myself to try and go viral, but no one picks them up. However, not only was this image posted by Heroic Hollywood, it also got shared by Lee Bermejo, who said, Oh, the irony here. Now, why this is important is because Bermejo is actually the artist who created the quote-unquote Noel suit, and after designing it all the way back in Batman slash Deathblow after the fire, it's made appearances in all of the books from the artist. Initially, there were reports that Batman's costume for the film would draw heavily from the Bermejo design, and the artist did also reshare some fan art late last year, which seemingly confirmed this. Could Bermejo posting, oh the irony here, signify that this is actually very close to the Batsuit that fans have been eagerly awaiting? Well, personally, that's how I take it. What if this image is so close to it that it's ironic we are waiting for it when we've pretty much already seen what it looks like? We don't know, and the post sounds so enigmatic that the Riddler himself could have written it, but I definitely think it once more corroborates that we will be seeing something similar to it in the finished product. Some diehard Dark Knight fans have been calling out for the white glass eyes for a while to be brought across to the final design, but it looks like we're going to be getting the mascara laden cowl that we've seen in every live action version of the Batman so far. This is because Robert Pattinson was seen out and about earlier in the week, and a fan got a photo of him that clearly showed the actor wearing guy liner. Maybe he's born with it, maybe it's magic marker, but it did send the internet into a flurry over what was going on. A lot of people said he looked tired, some said he'd taken Kristen Stewart's mascara in the divorce, and others said grow up and stop watching comic book movies. Whilst initially people did think that we were making a mountain out of a molehill, the actor did appear later with the cast of Birds of Prey, and he seemingly was wearing the eyeliner once more. We even got to see Harley Quinn having a bowling match with Batman, and yeah, the group do seem to be having a great night. But where was my invite, and what does this signify? Well, as the Batman is shooting right now, it does seem to confirm that we will be getting the eyes in the cowl. Films tend to always want to show eyes, as they massively help to emote, and I did suspect that this would be the case with the Batman. The MCU thought their way through this with Iron Man after placing in a helmet cam, and Spider-Man's eyes of course react to things as they go on. Batman has always been a bit more difficult, but it looks like they're keeping in line with the Bermejo cowl and bringing the eyes and guy liner once more. As for the logo, you may have seen that we discussed recently that Matt Reeves posted the clapperboard for the film in its first day of shooting. Fans actually blew up the text that was on the item and placed it on a white background, and there's actually a lot of cool little easter eggs and hints for fans. Firstly, I just want to give a huge shout out to Chris at 3C Films for spotting these, and definitely go check out his channel for some awesome movie updates. Anyway, it was revealed that the letters themselves all have hidden little tidbits in them that add a lot more weight to the theory that this will be used as the final logo for the film. If we zoom in on the A, we can see what is a silhouette of the penguin. Colin Farrell is of course playing the villainous crime boss of Gotham, so this is a nice little nod to him. There are also aspects of the logo that look like Gotham's skyline. We do know that the movie is shooting in Glasgow, and though the city doesn't really have a collection of skyscrapers that could be incorporated into its architecture, it is possible through CGI that this is suggesting they are going to be adding things digitally. Gotham is of course a huge metropolis, and with Glasgow being a typical city in the UK, I do think that this highlights that the structures may be added in post. There's also a crevice that looks like it could have a question mark symbol there for the Riddler, or even a backwards R. 
Chris did say that he thinks this will be a hint towards Robin, and after we know that the film will be based on the long Halloween, it could indeed be the case. Now, whilst Robin doesn't feature in that book, the graphic novel's direct sequel, Dark Victory, actually centers around the origin story of the character, so it is possible that they could be setting it up throughout this movie. I'm not 100% on that, but yeah, it does definitely provide some food for thought. Before we get into the rest of the video, I just want to let you know we're giving away a free copy of Doctor Sleep to one random subscriber. All you have to do to be in with a chance of winning is like the video, subscribe to the channel and leave your thoughts on the updates in the comments section below. The winner is going to be chosen at random on the 15th of February and the set will be shipped out from then to whoever gets the prize, so best of luck to everyone who takes part. Okay, so according to the Daily Record, a message was posted on the American Muscle Scotland Facebook group that said that the Batman was requesting fans bring in American cars from the 80s all the way up to present day to feature in the background of scenes. We did originally speculate that the Batman will be set in the late 90s, early 2000s, but this post has made some think that it will be set in modern day. Personally, I still think it may be a period piece and these cars will have been put in place to give the movie a more timeless feel. A lot of properties such as Batman 1989 and the animated series have pulled from a lot of different time periods in order to create the overall feel of Gotham and it would make sense to mimic this here with audiences being unable to get a proper feeling of exactly when the film is supposed to be set. We also learn a lot about the feel of the movie this week with a brand new interview. YouTube channel Hey You Guys caught up with the composer of the Batman and this is what he had to say about the movie and working with Matt Reeves in general. Work on, you know. I love those big sort of event films, Star Trek, Star Wars, whatever, all the Marvel stuff. I love all of those. It's really fun to be a part of those uh, because that's what I loved as a kid, you know. And uh, and now it's like, you know, to, to look back and see all those things. Every one of those movies is something that I either had a comic book of or a, or I watched the movies as a kid. And I, I just it's so weird to be a part of it. I, right now I'm in the middle of beginning uh, some stuff for Batman, and that is a really fun. Thing to be a part of because again I loved Batman you know as we all do growing yeah. up so it's just fun to be a part of taking it and doing your own version of it so it's it's nice right. yeah I was gonna ask you about Batman actually because I'm such a huge fan and it, it seems like this is a very different take to what we've seen before has oh, yeah. has Matt given you any kind of guidance in terms of the comic books he's he's like, obviously you can't tell us but I can imagine he's picked a few stories that he maybe wants to try and capture the tone of Matt and I have talked about this for well over a year now and you know I mean we're, we're, we're like best friends so we we talk all the time anyway so it's it's this is just normal part of our conversations wouldn't it be cool if we did this or wouldn't it be fun if we did this and you know let's take it in this direction do something different and you know that's what we're just trying to do is to take it and do our version of it the thing that we would want to do and hopefully that is different from everyone else's and 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 tells every kids you know i used to love going in and see everyone's different take on you know you'd get a, a comic book series and it would be a whole new take on the character and that was always fun to do and that's what i feel like we're being we're a part of that that whole uh, task at this point. Yeah. And just as a final question, I mean, the cast is, is pretty extraordinary anyway, but uh, obviously you're friends with him. I mean, what has he given you any indication or did he, has he told you why specifically he wanted Robert Pattinson or was that kind of a process or I, you probably can't tell me too much, but it is Robert Pattinson and it's very distinct, again, very distinctive and a very different choice to what we've seen before. I think it's always a process. You know, you're always kind of going through whittling down and figuring things out, but I knew I think from day one, he knew that, you know, he was an amazing, he's an amazing actor. Yeah. He's an incredible actor. And in this business, you get pigeonholed for certain things. If you do one thing, you know, and it, and it goes off well, then that's the only thing you're going to be known for. So uh, it's for someone like him, it's really, that's not a fair assessment. He is an amazing actor who can do pretty much anything, you know, and that's what I'm excited about to see him in this role doing something different. So. Uh, have, you, have you seen the suit yet or are you waiting like the rest of us? I've seen it. <laughs> <laughs> so it sounds like they're doing a new sort of take on the character that we haven't seen on the big screen before and I'm really excited to see how this comes across in the movie. And finally, there's actually a lot of buzz online that we may get either our first look at the cat suit, bat suit or both on Valentine's Day. According to insiders, Warner Bros could be releasing an image of comic book's biggest cape crusading couple to celebrate the special occasion, but we are yet to verify this. It does seem to be floating about, and there were actually a couple of tweets flying around that have since been deleted that say we may see something similar to the image on screen right now. This would not show the Batman, 
but it would tease the costume slightly and give us our first look at Catwoman who as of now hasn't had much hype surrounding her. I think this would be an awesome thing for fans and though I'm not sure whether we will see the Batsuit just yet, it is good to hear that the release may be right around the corner. It would be amazing to get this and then another image of the Batsuit and Batmobile together later down the line. Putting a tease of Batman in is definitely one way to get people to share the image of Catwoman and Valentine's Day is a day that has been dropped a couple of times online in, in terms of the release day that we could be getting but I guess we're just gonna have to see. Now obviously I'd love to hear your thoughts on the updates and what you want to see in the film. Comment below and let me know and if you enjoyed this video then please give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to the channel for updates like this every week. Same bad time, same bad channel. If you want to watch more DC stuff then we've just dropped a video on the Birds of Prey which is going to be linked at the end. We break down everything you need to know about the group before the movie comes out so it's definitely worth checking out if you want to know who's who in the comics. If you want to support the channel from as little as 99 cents a month then please click the join button below. You get access to content early and can also suggest video topics and breakdowns. We massively appreciate it and it goes a long way to helping videos like this get made. If you want to come chat to us after the show either follow us at DefinitionYT or click the discord link in the description below. Those are the best ways to keep up to date with heavy spoilers so hopefully we see you over there very soon. This is a channel for people who are super into superheroes, so if that's the kind of thing you like, hit subscribe. Thank you for taking the time to watch this. I've been Definition, you've been the best, and I'll see you next time. Take care, peace.